What is good guys, Charles and Team COG coming at you guys here with a post commentary dual video. We have World Chalice as you see comboing off on the left. And of course I'm piloting Fire Fist and on the right. If you guys haven't, please check out our Fire Fist local report. This I ended up going un not undefeated, but I ended up getting first in this tournament. So please feel free to check it out. And uh, we get to see, I know you guys want to see some World Chalice play, so here you guys are going to get them. Also, guys, do take note to check out our sponsors down in the description box below. Also, if you guys want to win a Deck Tech Mortifier deck box, please head over to the community tab, find out how you guys can enter the giveaway to win that. So we have World Legacy, World Chalice touching down, and um, I lost the dice roll, and he already has Waterfront, which is not looking good for me, but we're going to see the Sling Sum of Orem, Bladesmaster, and World Chalice is going to be activating. So I smack down Ash, because, you know, if he has a call by, he has it, and then if he can play through it, he can play through it. But, um... Uh, essentially, he was going to use Waterfront's effect to search, and then, you know, I was just pretty much telling him, like, it was 50-50. I either stop Waterfront or I stop the floating, and I felt like the floating was more important at this time, because even if he gets a Gamma Seal to his hand, he can't put Gamma Seal out if he doesn't have the floating. So, as long as he doesn't have, like, any crazy extenders, we're pretty good. Well, anyway, he passes it over to me, and I draw for turn. Uh, looking at the board, it's not too intimidating. I don't know what hand traps he has or anything like that. So, I do the normal summon of Raven. I just explained to him what Raven does. Uh, Raven's really awesome because it doesn't get, can't get ashed. It just sets from the deck, which is awesome. So we're going to go into Almirage. Almirage is going to do nothing, but Raven is going to set us from the deck. I don't, I think I go for Tinsu, I believe, because I think I have Panda in hand, and I open, like, the essentially the plus 11 combo, which at this point I don't, plus 11 doesn't do me anything. Um, but I do believe, I, I think Tinsu is what I end up going for, or maybe I go for Tinky and I already have Tinsu. I can't quite remember in this scenario. I do, actually, I did see in my hand, I open a Sento. Uh, and uh, I'm looking at Tensu. I do think Tensu is the right mount, the right way to go. But uh, anyway, guys, uh, we're going to get Tensu here. Please remember, uh, please remember to check out our sponsors down below. If you guys enjoy the sleeves that I am using over on the right, they're used there in Premium Duels. Just check out our link in the description. Head on over there. And if you also enjoy the mat, check out Affidian Games and Accessories. Link down below and use our discount code to get 5% off. So I'm going to activate Tinsu, triggering the Panda. Panda will then summon itself, and then on summon, it summons back the Raven. Panda is so good, except for now I'm restricted into Fire Fist, which is unnecessary. Uh, Raven will then activate again, because it's not a hard once per turn. That Waterfront over there just racking up counters. I'm going to set Tinky because I don't. That's right. I haven't used the effect, the the additional normal that Tensu gives. I've only uh, activated it just to trigger off my panda. Uh, so then I'll activate Tinky to grab me Dragon. So right now I can use Eagle's effect to bounce back the Tinky, or I could use it to bounce back a Fire Formation in my graveyard to my hand to Foolish Burial, and I'm going to Foolish rooster so my pretty much goal here is to get to eland because my thought process is you know for world chalice their, their link monsters float it's one of the main like one of the huge advantages the deck has uh using my additional normal off of tinky going to uh normal dragon not having to pay cost i'm going to monster reborn i uh, just explaining how eagle works the uh rooster rooster's effect will grab me eland and then i think that we're pretty much we're, we're ready to keep going off. So one of the biggest worst things that these two decks have against each other right now is time. We're both very combo heavy, combo oriented. So like our turns take a quick minute. I actually have the video sped up quite a bit just so like we can, it wouldn't be like a 40, 30 minute long video. Even then I think it's still like 20 minutes, but like we're gonna use Eagle or use Rooster to set Sento. Yep, that's, and then I'll activate Dome to send the rooster from my hand and rooster from field to summon Elon, triggering the effect of Dragon to set another Sento from the deck, which kind of hindsight, maybe I shouldn't have done that. I should have just done like Engine maybe, because Engine does float, so not really thinking there, just kind of forgot about it. And I guess I didn't open a Sento. Maybe I thought I saw it in my hand or not. So anyway, this is essentially the plus 11 combo. Two cards got me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plus I think three in hand, so that's uh, 11. So it's quite crazy. Um, however, I only have two interruptions. However, in this simplified game state, that it might be enough. Um, contemplating how I want to do this, I'm doing math. My Elon is 25, my Eagle is 17, and my uh, Dragon, I believe, is 19. 
And then we're just calculating. I, Aurum is of the world chalice is actually at 23. So then I end up whacking into it with the dragon, with Elon, excuse me, and then I smack him for 18 and 19. And then we're just kind of, I think that's the it, of, that's it of my turn. I can't activate anything else. Um, so I have to pass over to him. Um, and he's just acting, he's asking, you know, what does what sort of thing. And, but yeah, time is such a big hindrance to combo decks in today's format. Like that new time rule, I always spend it, which hindsight, you know, if you're not a combo player, you get it. So he's going to flip and try to activate the Shade Brigandine. And I feel like I have to answer that with the, um, with the Cento, and then triggering the Panda in my hand, because Panda is a multi-faker-esque card, as long as you activate a Fire Formation, and uh, Spell a Trap, you can summon him as long as it's not doing the damage step. Panda summons back Rooster, Rooster grabs me the Dragon. Um, but I feel like I had to negate that, uh, negate the Shade Brigadoon, but he's going to use the Lee, the World Chalice Fairies effect in Graveyard, to ditch the Gamma Seal. I don't think he added back. No, no. So he pitched um he pitched for Lee and I negated Lee. That's what I did. And then he's going to banish um the World Legacy World Chalice to grab himself. I believe he's gonna go for succession. That'd be pretty that'd be a pretty good play to get the succession. Then he could monster reborn back the gamma seal and it's live for negates. So that's exactly what he goes for is succession. Um but so like right now I have like if like it's kinda scary because like you're looking like this entire board is pretty big. I mean, I've already blown through my two interruptions, but even like a one turtley boy is all it takes. And this is going to be the most simplistic play you'll ever be able to see. Uh, we see Link Spider come down, and then we're just going to see the raw dog activation of Succession. Bringing back the turtle, <laughs> which is not great by any means. But the turtle has a solid tuna gates no matter what, so i got to be very careful with how I handle my next turn. Um, just because, like, you know, like, if I, if, if I play wrong, he could just continually negate everything, and then my entire board will be just dismantled. So I gotta play this excruciatingly, I gotta play this very carefully in this, in this particular game, otherwise, you know, I might not, uh, might not turn out well. However, being experienced with the turtle, and this man across from me is playing the World Chalice, he's the man who taught me about Gamma Seal. He's the one who taught me how to play Gamma Seal correctly, so... The master here is is uh, seeing if his student learned anything through the times of playing Gamma Seal. So uh, essentially, uh, he's going to whack into Almirage. I'm, I think I'm going to actually trigger Almirage's effect to target the Eland. And he's just going to redeclare on the Rooster, which kind of brought to my attention. I don't know, uh, Rooster. I was, uh, the Rooster does not have to be summoned in defense. I should have summoned him in attack. But uh, so now, again, Gamma Seal locked and loaded, two live negates, and we can keep fueling it. So I got to really play this carefully. Um, but also, he also knows that I can bait out the negates, and then once you bait out the negates and stop something, you can completely, uh, kind of, like, out outwin the Gamma Seal in a sense. So his negations have to be carefully as well. But right now, my kind of the current thought process is to try to bait it to where I can get him down to do his two negations, and once he negates the final time, I can use Elin. As long as he's down to one counter, I can use Elin to negate the Gamma Seal. And then I can stop that from happening. But I'm trying to use... I'm going to go ahead and use Tinky. Tinky is, I think... I don't even know what I grab off of Tinky. I don't even know if I grab anything off of Tinky. Uh, I know I grabbed something. I just can't remember... can't think of what it was. I think it was maybe a Raven. But right now, thanks to Tinky and Tensu, uh, Eland is... They're all 200 stronger. So Eland is at 20, 26, I believe. And Panda is at 23. But still, impossible. It's still rough to get over that booty, that three thousand booty that the turtles packing. Uh, so I'm just explaining how Elon works. How I can, like, I'm not. I don't have to say send us cost. And he's just confirming. He's like, if I negate this, you can chain Elon, and then I can negate the Elon. And I was like, as long as you have counters, you can do whatever the heck you want. But again, he knows I'm trying to potentially like bait him because like this is this is one of the strenuous processes of like I have to make my plays very carefully. Otherwise, my entire board, like I said previously, will just get dismantled by the turtle, and then I'm in a losing spot. I'm going to add Elephant off of the Tinky. Elephant, like I said, if you guys haven't checked out the uh, local discussion, I highly recommend going back and checking it out. Local report. Uh, Elephant is like a netivist of the deck, guys. Like, it is just, it does two things that are the deck really needs, and it's just, oh, it's phenomenal. So, contemplating on what I'm going to do here, it's definitely very difficult. 
I do get two normal summons. Uh, well, I think I try to go, so I attempt to use Dragon to Monster Reborn, and I send two for cost. And this is actually where I thought he would negate, but he doesn't negate, so I just get the Dragon Summon. And I was hoping, like, even if he negated the Dragon, I could summon the Dome would trigger. Uh, Rooster's going to come back off of the Dragon, and I believe Rooster... I should search off a of Rooster's effect because I summon him with the Dragon. And I think that's one. Yep, so I attempt to activate Rooster. He negates and banishes the Rooster. So now he has three. So I'm kind of... I'm getting there, guys. I'm slowly getting to where I need to be. So I go ahead, and I believe I normal summon the... Uh, Use my additional normal summon to normal summon the elephant, the glare. So guys, our shop ended up moving, so now we don't have like the perfect spot where there is no glare, sadly. Um, it sucks, but you I mean, what can you say? Our shop had to move during the quarantine, so sadly, no, we are cursed with glare. But that is the elephant there, and the panda's right next to it. Um, I activate the dra uh, elephant's effect to add a panda. He decides not to negate that. In hindsight, if he did, that actually would have probably put him, that would probably have stopped my plays altogether. But we'll have to wait and see what happens here. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and overlay. I think about going into um, Tiger King. Because then I can get a set additional pluses off of Tiger King. And then like I can, um, what do you call it? I can skill drain the entire board. But I actually don't think that's great. Because that still leaves Gamma Seal on board. That still, you know, it still leaves too much. Uh, so believe it or not, I'm scrolling through my extra deck and I find Cardinal. And Cardinal is busted. I detach two from Cardinal. To shuffle back two monsters from face up or two fire for fire fist or fire formation cards from my graveyard or on my field into the deck and I shuffle two cards he has on the deck. So uh, he will opt to negate with Gamma Seal. But this is where I got this is where Elon's like little crossbow is gonna come in. I target Gamma Seal and Waterfront, pretty much making him have to negate. And if he chooses to negate, I have the response with the Eland, which puts me in a very so there he attempts to negate, I'll chain Eland, um, and then both of them just get shuffled back. I'm just making sure, yep, Elan, reading about reading Elan again, and reading Cardinal. That shuffles back, those two cards. So now we're in it, so um, here we wrap it up and go into the next game. So Fire Fist, <laughs> somehow pulling through that uh, game one there. Uh, that was pretty tough. So now we're going into game two, and our boy World Chalice, I believe, is going first. So the one bad thing about uh, Fire Fist is we actually don't have no inherent draw power. So, like, one thing that Mermels, like Atlante Mermels have, they have Moray of Greed and stuff like that. Fire Fist don't have anything like that, sadly. Uh, we just have, like, Pot of Desires, essentially, and I'm not opting to play that because you play some one-ofs that are some con essentially combo pieces. Um, he's going to set two cards, and I'm going to draw for turn. He's going to flip over Artifact Sanctum, which, ugh. Artifact Sanctum is so powerful against this deck. Um, we're going to summon out the uh, uh, Scythe. And I kind of contemplate. I figured I could like kind of extend into a board, but then I can't get rid of Scythe. Um, I could uh, Normal Summon Raven, smack into Lee, get rid of Lee, but then he can pitch a card from hand for Lee's effect just to add it back. So I just opt to set Raven for this turn, just because I feel like Raven will go to the graveyard and float, or and, like let me set a card. But essentially, that's one thing, like, World Chalice, it just needs that one turn. He gets a normal monster, that's all he needs. And now, just, like, the combo just kind of goes into Emduk. Emduk will give him an additional normal summon, which he will tribute the Leaf for the World Legacy World Chalice. And then we're just kind of spiraling out of control. However, shout out to Caleb. Both of us are really, he's activating Lee's effect to pitch the puppy to add Lee back. He was, we're both really conscious of time because, like, we both understood, like, our turns take quite a while. And even though we are very skilled, even you can be super skilled with the deck, you're still like, your turns will still take time just because the thought process and stuff like that. But he's going to float out from the hand using the floating out the Lee via Emdux effect. And the World Legacy World Chalice is going to grab him Chosen and the Puppy World Legacy Guard Dragon, World Chalice Guard Dragon, excuse me, from the deck. Uh, so now, actually, I'm just kind of a sitting deck. I'm kind of, con I'm still trying to see if he could put on game. Uh, right now would be a good chance to push for game, and actually seeing the Lib the Keymaster is practically ensuring that there's going to be game, uh, just because it's going to be really rough to play through. Uh, Lib is going to activate, setting him World Legacy Succession, which is just already nasty in its own self. Then he's vanishing the Guard Dragon to summon back the Chosen. Right now he can go into a Skull Dread, actually, and if he makes his Skull Dread, he can use Lib and... Uh, shuffle back a card as well 
So that's just actually, that's just quite, cor quite crazy. Um, going into using all four of those monsters to link into a Skulldred to use Lib to shuffle back the Raven. So Raven does not get the float. And then Skulldred gets him four cards. He has to put back three. And then, you know, if he sees Waterfront, it's going to be a nasty day. But actually, I don't think he ends up seeing Waterfront in this match. I can't quite remember. I think he just sees another super powerful card that World Chalice has that um, you just don't think about. Uh, we're going to see Succession activating to bring back Lib. Lib is actually a 2,000 monster, so it, he's shooting for damage. But we're going to see the special of Exodia. So Exodia is just so powerful, especially with the Venus engine. Um, he's putting, he's uh, shuffles back everything. So here's something very interesting for all you World Chalice players out there who um, have played the deck, who probably know, maybe you don't know. Uh, with Exodia and playing the Artifact Engine, you make Scythe live again. So right now, if he drew into another Artifact Sanctum, he just put back the Scythe. So Scythe is alive and well. And he's going to swing in for a total of all, practically damage. He's leaving me alive at 200, I think, I believe, or... Yep, 200 life points is all I have left. And he sets a card, and, you know, like, I didn't even think about it being another Sanctum. But I draw for turn, he fires off that second Sanctum. And, you know, potentially, maybe I could have played through if he didn't have the Sanctum. But that Sanctum is kind of... It's, you know, that's it. That's that's the dead. Dead. I'm going to attempt to activate Tanky. I mean, at this point, I don't know where I can go or how I can go anywhere. But we're just going to wrap it up and go into Game 3. Uh, game 3, I'm going to opt to go first. And we're both just like, ooh, our hand's pretty good. I can kind of see an evenly matched floating there in uh, my man Caleb's hand. Uh, normal summoning red resonators to special summon out bear. Uh, these two always come in hand. Like, anytime I see bear, I see a resonator. Uh, but we're going to see the horse prince be summoned. And this is going to be actually quite cool. I'm going to show you the horse prince combos. Uh, we're going to summon out rooster. Rooster is going to grab us, I believe, dragon. Yep, so we're going to grab the dragon. Actually, a huge misplay, or not even a misplay, I'd say a huge mistake on my part is I actually forgot to add um, Dweller into my uh, extra deck, which totally, totally stinks. Uh, but I'm going to use Rooster to send the Dome, because Dome is just a monster born now to reborn the, the bear, which is right there in the glare, and reset, I think, Kensu, I believe. Go into Eagle. We'll use Eagle's effect to bounce back the Dome to send, I believe, Buffalo. Buffalo is really good, too. Uh, so there's Buffalo. Buffalo hits the graveyard. We're still... Trying, you know, time is being called, so I'm trying to play as fast as I can. I activate Tensu to gain my additional normal summon of Dragon. I will opt to use Dragon's effect to reborn the uh, Buffalo overlay here for Tiger King. Tiger King will then on summon set Sinto. I will then use Bear's effect to pop the Tiger King using Tiger King's effect without having to pay cost to summon out two. So I just summon out two more Dragons. And this is just kind of where the deck kind of like explodes off into um, some crazy combos. Like essentially I could make Dweller, but I totally forgot to make and like even put Dweller in. I remember I was supposed to buy it because our locals allow us to buy cars and stuff like that. And I totally spaced it. I got distracted setting up for all the live duels. But I'll use Dragon to summon back the uh, Rooster. Rooster's effect. I shouldn't be get. No, no, no. I'm using Rooster's effect to set Fire Formation or Liang Peak which essentially this entire tournament was a battle for Liang Peak. We were getting besieged by everyone else, so this Fire Crusade had to hold its ground, I guess. But uh, then I opt to use the Buffalo's actual effect. And I link these four into Appaloosa, 4-4. Four, four. I have a set Sento, so there's four or five interruptions. And then I use Dragon's effect to reborn. To reborn out Buffalo again. I opt to overlay, yep, I overlay here, and it's at this moment where I realize I forgot I didn't even have Dweller, which was so upsetting. So I make another Tiger King and just uh, set another Tinky just for the follow-up. I drop a card because I'm clumsy and their time's coming in. Uh, so they should be some counters on Liang Peak, but at this moment, you know, like, I kind of don't even care. So he draws for turn, and uh, time is getting really close in the round. He activates Dark Ruler no more, but, like, you know, the deck can... Stop Dark Ruler no more. I flip over Sento. Uh, so right now, like, everything's just kind of difficult, um, speaking for from Caleb's perspective, the World Chalice player, because now his best starter card in the entire deck makes him pay life, and time is ticking. And we actually talked about after the game, if he if time wasn't an issue, he probably would have been able to break through this board, but he would just, since time being an issue, if he's having to kill himself, he's already down to 1,000 
and uh, it's just not looking good for him um, in this sense. It's not if he can't, you know, he has to be able to push for damage, but like when time, like as long as he keeps using Venus, the strongest card in his deck, you know, he just coincidentally is killing himself. So like it, even right now, like I'm technically winning. Even if that Dark Ruler resolved, I'd technically be winning. But we're going to see Emduk pop down, and uh, he's not going to use the third effect. He's going to go into Cerberus and attempt to pop, I believe, a card. He goes into Cerberus. Uh, he pitches a card off of Cerberus, and then see, he pitches the evenly match to target the, that right there. I'm kind of contemplating. I'm trying not to think. I want to, I want to negate it. Kind of, but then I realize I have an Ash in hand as well, and I think Ash negates Cerberus' effect, like if you do that. But we wrap it up here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Firefist taking the game. Thank you guys so much. Stay tuned for other videos. Charles signing out.